All right, class, today we are studying uh, geometric sequences in series. Uh, this is a different type of sequence in series than we talked about yesterday with arithmetic sequences. Um, very much, we're going to be doing similar types of problems, only that the sequences are going to be of a different type. All right, first up, we have three terms, just like yesterday. Uh, if the substitute wouldn't mind pausing it here and letting the students copy this all down, that would be great. Thank you. All right, so our first term is just a geometric sequence. And what a geometric sequence is, is uh, when the consecutive terms in a sequence have the same ratio. Okay, that's going to be, oh boy, that's going to be the key with what we're looking for, is we're looking for a, a common ratio. Um, I'm going to give you an example of a geometric sequence. This would be like 2, 4, 8, 16. Remember, an arithmetic sequence was 2, 4, 6, 8, uh, because each time you're adding 2, in a geometric sequence, we're looking for basically a common number that you're multiplying each term by. Um, the number, that if you look here, each time we're multiplying by 2, multiplying by 2, multiplying by 2, that 2 ends up being our common ratio, and we use the letter R to represent that. But then if we took uh, our sequence here and we summed them, uh, we would get 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8. And this is no longer a sequence. This is now a series. All right, so now we're looking for identifying if a sequence is geometric or not. Um, we're looking for multiplying by a common number. However, sometimes uh, this is even a more exa obvious example than it should be. Uh, you're looking, because you can see right here you multiplied by 2. Here you didn't multiply by 2. Um, but I'll show you what the test is for that. What you do is you take the second term and divide it by the first term. So 8 divided by negative 4 is negative 2. Then you go to the third term, divide it by the second term. That's negative 2. And you make sure that it gives you a common number each time, and it will here every time it's going to give you negative 2. And so this, indeed, is a geometric sequence. This one here, on the other hand, if you took 2 and divided it by 1, you would get 2. And then if you took 6 and divided it by 2, you would get 3. And then you took 24 and divided it by 6, and you got 4. Uh, and then this is not clearly not a common ratio, and so this is not a geometric sequence. One of our main types of questions is going to be to write a rule for a given geometric sequence. Uh, once again, we have a nice formula for this. Uh, the nth term of a geometric sequence uh, with our same first term, a sub 1, in common ratio r, is given by this formula. I'll give you guys a second to write that down. All right. So I uh, wrote the formula again right here in case you're still copying that down. Uh, you're going to get some of your homework problems are going to look like this. They're just going to give you a sequence. Uh, say write a rule for it. Um, so in this example here, 4, 20, 100, and then 500, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to set it up like a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. All right, uh, n minus 1 is just going to stay that. That's just going to be part of your answer. And so the two things that you need to find are a sub 1 and r. a sub 1 is fairly easy to find in these types of examples uh, just because a sub 1 is the first term, and our first term is 4. So we would have a sub n is equal to 4 times r, whatever r is, to the n minus 1. Remember from the last slide, the way we found r was by simply taking the second term and dividing by the first term. We got 5. 100 divided by 20 is 5. 500 divided by 100 is also 5. And so 5 is my common ratio. In case you were doubting this process, it's uh, quite easy to check. Uh, if you plug in 1, 1 minus 1 is 0. 5 to the 0 is 1. And 1 times 4 is 4. So it worked for 1. Does it work for 2? If I plug in 2, 
I would get 2 minus 1 here, so I would get 1, 5 to the first is 5, 5 times 4 is 20. And so that did work. Um, if the substitute wouldn't mind pausing here once again, uh, once you guys work through this, compare with the neighbor, see how you did. All right, so here's what I get. I get a sub n is equal to, my first term is 152. Um, my common ratio, negative 76 divided by 52 is negative 1 half. 38 divided by negative 76 is negative 1 half. I get all sorts of problems. Negative 19 divided by 38 is negative 1 half. So my common ratio is going to be negative 1 half. And then up here goes n minus 1. So that would be your answer. All right, a second type of homework question that you're going to have. This is just like you guys' homework for the arithmetic sequences. Um, you're not given the first term anymore. You're given that the sixth term is negative 96. And so uh, we're going to have to solve for our first term before we can actually give, a, give an answer. And so our formula is still the same. a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. Go ahead and plug in 2 for r. Uh, we don't know what the first term is, like I said. But we're going to plug in 6 for n, and we're going to put negative 96. We're going to end up substituting that in for a sub n. Uh, what we're basically saying is that the sixth term is negative 96, so plug in all that for information in, and then solve for your first term. So you're going to plug in 6 for n, this would be 6 minus 1, and then right here, a sub n, we're going to put negative 96 in that spot. Uh, so we get negative 96 is equal to a sub 1, times 2 to the 5th power. 2 to the 5th power is 32. And we don't know what a sub 1 is still, so a sub 1 times 32 is equal to negative 96. I divide each side by 32, and we get negative 3 is equal to a sub 1. And so, now we can complete our answer. a sub n is equal to negative 3 times whatever r is, 2 to the n minus 1. All right, once again, if the substitute wouldn't mind pausing here, uh, you guys can have a couple minutes to try this problem. Compare with your neighbor when you're done. All right, let's see how you guys did. a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. We know what r is. It's negative 0.25 or negative 1 fourth. I'm actually just going to write negative 1 fourth here. Okay. Negative. All right, I am going to write negative 0.25. Negative 0.25 times n minus 1. Uh, we don't know what a sub 1 is. And we don't know what a sub n is at this point. Uh, we can go ahead and plug in negative 12 for a sub n, as long as we put in 4 for n. And so it'll read it negative. Goodness sakes. I hate my pen. It doesn't work. Negative 12 is equal to a sub 1 times negative 0.25 to the third power, or the 4, four minus 1 power. So here we have negative 12 is equal to a sub 1 uh, negative 0.25 to the third is negative 1 over 64. If I'm then, I'm solving for a sub 1. If I multiply each side by negative 64 over 1, I get, let's see here, negative 64 times negative 12 is equal to positive 768 is equal to a sub 1. And so, my final answer is a sub n is equal to 768 um, R, which is negative 0.25, to the n minus 1. Hopefully you guys got that. All right. <coughs> uh, we have one more type of problem to cover, uh, and then you guys can have uh, the rest of the time to work on uh, this kind of two-part assignment almost. Um, we also need to be able to calculate the sum of a finite geometric series. Uh, and so we have this nifty formula, um, s sub n, so the sum of the first n numbers is equal to the first term times 
uh, this ratio right here, 1 minus r to the n divided by 1 minus r. Give you guys a second to copy that down. All right, so here we go with an example of this. Um, hopefully we can tell right away how many terms we have. Um, remember, with this notation, one, you plug in one, then you plug in two, and you keep plugging in numbers until you get to whatever's up here. Um, and so there's going to be 12 numbers, so n is going to equal 12. a sub one, our first term, is going to equal whatever we plug into um, whatever we get when you plug 1 into this expression. And then r is going to be the number that it's multiplied by each time. Well, there's kind of a little trick that can work a lot of times for this. If you notice, this is already in the notation that we were trying to write equations in. And that notation was a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. If it is already in this notation, well, you already know what a sub 1 is. It's the number in front. And you already know what r is. It's the number being taken to the power. So this formula becomes, uh, <coughs> sorry about that, uh, quite simple. So it would be s sub n is equal to a sub 1, which we decided is 4 because that's the number out in front, 4 times 1 minus uh, r, which our r value is 3, to the nth power, the number of numbers we have. So it would be to the 12th power. And this is going to be divided by 1 minus whatever our ratio is, which is 3. Uh, be careful here with your simplification. First the thing that you would do is do 3 to the 12th. Um, and then do 1 minus that. Don't, don't take 12, uh, negative 3 to the 12th power and put it in parentheses or anything weird like that. So 3 to the 12th power is 531441. But if you do 1 minus that, you get... 4 times 5, 3, 1, 4, 4, 0. This is all going to be, uh, this is negative, all over negative 2. Divide that by 2, negative 2. And then multiply that by 4, and we have our answer. So S sub, this is 12 terms now that we added up. So S sub 12 is equal to 1062880. All right, so here's your homework. Uh, 3 through 36 every third, and then 48 through 51, and then the quiz on page 817. Uh, that's numbers 1 through 15. Uh, the I also made the quiz open notes, uh, especially because I haven't been there for this whole section. Um, if you really feel like you uh, are completely lost on this, please email me, and uh, we can try to figure something out. Uh, hope you guys have a good one. See ya.